painting as it now promises, to become more subtle, more music and less sculpture. In fact, it promises colour. This is just one of the many references to music that Van Gogh makes in his letters to his brother, Theo. He described his 1885 painting, Lane with Poplar's Nenunun, as a symphony in yellow, compared the combination of intense colours in the bedroom to Wagner's orchestral music, and likened a period of restless work during the summer of 1888 to reaching the high yellow note. In another letter talking about a particular canvas, he wrote, whether I've actually sung a lullaby with colour, I leave to the critics. Van Gogh was referring here to this painting, Les Berceurs, or Woman Rocking a Cradle. Of the five portraits of Augustine Roland, this is the one she chose to keep. But each version helps us get closer to understanding what Van Gogh meant by singing a lullaby with colour. The music in this painting is in the way colours are juxtaposed. A woman, dressed in green with orange hair against a green background with pink flowers, now these discordant sharps of garish pink, garish orange, garish green are toned down by flats of reds and greens. This was his symphony of colours. Music, sound and noise for Van Gogh were inseparable from the visual aspects of a scene. He wanted his paintings to be heard and felt as much as being seen for the observer to experience the soft rustling of wheat in the wind, the incessant drone of cicadas, and the life, breath and music of every one of his subjects. This approach can very easily be compared to Wagner's idea of the Gesamtkunstwerk, a work of universal art that subordinated each musical, visual or dramatic element to an overarching goal or principle. For Wagner, this came in the form of his operas like Tristan und Isolde and Parsifal, and for Van Gogh, this came in the form of his paintings. But music represented more than just another way of experiencing his art. It represented an ideal. Van Gogh's approach to colour comes from the work of his idol, Eugène Delacroix, whose colour theory he read about in Blanc's Grammaire des Arts du Dessin. Delacroix talked about the music of the painting which comes from an impression that results from a certain arrangement of colours, light effects, shadows. He believed that the conflict at the centre of art was between the literary part of the work, i.e. what it represented, and the musical part, the hidden layer of meaning and consciousness. Delacroix felt that only through finding the music in a painting could you get to the truth. And he explored this idea by painting flower pictures. With these, he could experiment exclusively with the interplay of colours, and not worry about narrative or story. This is most likely where Van Gogh got his inspiration from to paint between 35 and 40 flower still lifes whilst living in Paris. Seeking oppositions of blue with orange, red and green, yellow and violet, seeking the broken and neutral tones to harmonize brutal extremes. This was an experiment in color that ultimately led to him painting a set of sunflowers in 1888 which he collectively described as a symphony in blue and yellow. But in order for Van Gogh to achieve truth in a painting, he felt he needed to lose himself, to dream in front of the canvas. I often don't know what I'm doing, working almost like a sleepwalker, he wrote. And I think you can definitely see this in his work. There's a vagueness to his paintings, achieved by indistinct and blurred lines as well as Van Gogh's use of optical mixing, where colours are placed side by side on the canvas instead of being combined. My great desire is to learn to make such inaccuracies, such variations, reworkings, alterations of the reality, that it might become, very well, lies if you will, but truer than the literal truth. But truth comes at a cost. And for Van Gogh, the cost was his health. Vincent suffered his first serious bout of illness whilst working on the series of portraits of Augustine Roland. During the attack, he began to sing. In my mental or nervous fever or madness, my thoughts sailed over many seas. I even dreamed of the Dutch ghost ship, and it seems that I sang then. I who can't sing on other occasions, to be precise, an old wet nurse's song, while thinking of what the cradle rocker sang as she rocked the sailors and whom I had sought in an arrangement of colours before falling ill. The music of his painting and his subject came to him in this moment, 
as well as a vision of a ghost ship, possibly linked to Wagner's opera, The Flying Dutchman. He also finishes with this slightly odd standalone sentence, not knowing the music of Berlioz. It's difficult to know exactly what the meaning of this line is, but it could be referring to Berlioz's Symphonie Fantastique, which is about the obsessive dreams and visions of a composer whilst under the influence of opium. It is no surprise though, that music is the thing that came to him in this moment of darkness. For Van Gogh, music represented solace, comfort and warmth, most likely because his formative experiences of music were of his mother playing the organ and piano, and of his family singing together. Music was never something that was aggressive or jagged for him, but instead it was a memory of childhood and of his home. Van Gogh was obsessed with rendering his dreams on canvas, but throughout his life was plagued by doubt and held back by his deteriorating mental state. Nature features so heavily in his paintings because it was consoling to him. Music emanates from his work because it represented a way for Van Gogh to find stillness. In the summer of 1888, he compared his furious work ethic to reaching the high yellow note, but despite calling the paintings he made the best he'd ever done, he also said, that that was the first and last cause of my going out of my mind. At the end of the year, he would sever part of his left ear with a razor blade, and in July 1890, he would die of sepsis brought on by shooting himself in the stomach. The most remarkable thing, I think, about Van Gogh's paintings is that despite how famous they are, despite how many times you've seen versions in galleries, museums, cafes and restaurants, hung apathetically on walls, is that if you listen closely, you can still hear the music of the man behind the canvas. Thank you for watching. It's so much fun to be able to put these essays together. I'm basically just choosing subjects that I want to find out more about and I was very surprised by how much music affected Van Gogh and influenced his work. If you've come across any other connections between art and music that interested you, then do let me know in the comments below. And as always, subscribe to keep up to date with all my new videos. See you next time.